Thank you for the opportunity to be back here in uh, Beijing. Um, I'm going to be starting off with a basic uh, review from the U.S. perspective of the Watchman uh, device, an exciting uh, device for the prevention of thromboembolic stroke and atrial fibrillation. Um, before I start, I'd like to remind everybody that at 12.30 today, uh, at room 302 uh, uh, here on the level three, there will be an advanced uh, hour-long symposium uh, covering the Watchman device by Dr. Seibel Carr from Cedar sinai uh, and uh, uh, the Honorary President Yaling Han. Uh, they will both be moderating that session. So if you want an in-depth uh, dive into the Watchman, uh, 12.30, room 302A. I apologize as well that the Chinese slides do not appear to be up. Um, so what are the current guidelines for Watchman in 2016 uh, or 2017? The European Society of Cardiology has a class 2B level of evidence B recommendation the, that left atrial uh, appendage occlusion may be considered for stroke prevention in patients with atrial fibrillation and contraindications for long-term anticoagulation. Uh, on the, on the US side, uh, there are no current ACC or AHA guidelines. We have yet to catch up and decide uh, what it is that we will be recommending. Um, the potential global appropriate rationales, though, are very obvious. The first is uh, recurrent bleeding with long-term oral anticoagulation with the ability to take short-term oral anticoagulation. The second is a high risk of bleeding uh, uh, from frequent falls and frailty for patients who have not bled. The third is non-adherence or refusal to take oral anticoagulation long-term. And the fourth is recurrent thromboembolic stroke on therapeutic oral anticoagulation with other etiologies ruled out. Um, the FDA uh, approved the Watchman device uh, in 2015 in the United States, uh, but the problem with the approval was that they followed the original trial uh, recommendations and stated that patients had to be eligible for warfarin, which does not really make sense. Um, the U.S. Center for Medi uh, Medicare Services, which is the body that pays for the device, uh, then stepped forward in 2016 and modified that initial um, uh, uh, recommendation. They stated that the patients had to have a high chats 2 vas score. There had to be documentation by independent non-interventional physicians or shared agreement. The patient had to be suitable for short-term warfarin, but unable to take long-term, so they, didn't, they are not covering it in patients who are unable to take oral anticoagulation at all. And that the procedure had to be performed in established structural heart or EP programs by people who have been well-trained in the, in, in, the, in the procedure. And the patients who were enrolled had to be in a national registry to track their outcomes for at least four years. Uh, and once again, this differed significantly from the March 2015 uh, FDA approval. Um, just a few slides about pre-procedure uh, planning. For those of you uh, who have not yet uh, started uh, Watchmen, I understand in China that 3,000 Watchmen have been uh, implanted uh, uh, to date. Uh, TEE must uh, be used. You must perform a full sweep of the left atrial appendage during the procedure. You measure your osteal and depth of appendage at multiple angles for sizing. The osteum measurement is from the left circumflex inferiorly to the lateral ridge superiorly, and the depth from the plane is perpendicular to the LAA osteum. Um, if uh, the left atrial size uh, uh, pressure is low, consider giving a fluid bolus to ensure that the left atrial appendage uh, expands to its maximum size, uh, uh, given that most patients tend to be fasting. Um, if you would like for pre-procedure planning, cardiac CT is actually more accurate and results in less device use per implant. You have 1.25 versus 1.8 uh, devices in the paper by Jacqueline Saw. Uh, morpho morphological limitations of left atrial appendage. Uh, a watchman cannot be placed if the depth is shallow, less than 17 millimeters. If your osteal diameter is larger than 30 millimeters, if you have a chicken wing left atrial appendage morphology with a proximal sharp bend, or if you have multiple uh, proximal pockets. Your sizes are your 21, 24, 27, 30, and 33, and the device should be oversized by about 20% uh, uh, of the appendage. These are the different left atrial appendage morphologies. You have the cauliflower, you have the windsock, the broccoli, and the chicken wing, and the chicken wing is the one, because of its shallow angle in this uh, plane, that you may have difficulty uh, uh, implanting the device. From procedural uh, uh, detail standpoint, we have femoral venous access with figure of eight sutures for uh, uh, bleeding control or, or pre-closure and you place a 14 French sheath. Uh, you must be uh, uh, well versed in transeptal puncture and it's an inferior posterior position of the puncture so that you can aim upwards towards the left atrial appendage. Um, 
determine your left atrial pressure size, and if it's less than 12 millimeters, uh, give an IV bolus to under, uh, overcome the undersizing. Obviously, ensure uh, meticulous uh, uh, anticoagulation and bubble uh, uh, control technique. The sheath is then advanced over a stiff wire placed in the left superior pulmonary vein. You then place a six French pigtail, which engages the left atrial appendage under imaging guidance, and you perform left atrial angiography. Both the sheath and the pigtail are then pushed uh, together over, uh, uh, um, uh, which is crucial that you have the pigtail out there because this minimizes perforation of the left atrial appendage. The device should be oversized. The device is then slowly unsheathed. If it's too distal, you can partially recapture the device. If it's too proximal, you have to completely uh, recapture the device. And then you check for coverage. You perform a little tug test, and you have an adequate, make sure there's an adequate seal and there should be a less than five millimeter leak by TEE. Um, here is the device. These are the various sizings and the corresponding left atrial ostium. So you can see the slight oversizing, the catheter. Here, uh, there are markers uh, for the different size device for the same sheath. And you can see upon uh, engagement here, once you enter the left atrial appendage, you've deployed the device and the TEE is performed to check uh, for leakage. Um, this is very important, the pharmacotherapy. Um, after the watchman, and you, some would argue that it is almost as important to, to ensure the success of the procedure itself. Uh, you take lifetime aspirin uh, between 81 to 325 milligrams for all patients. Uh, for the patients who can take it for a short period of warfarin, use uh, a warfarin to an INR of 2.3 to 3.0 for 45 days. Then clopidogrel 75 milligrams daily for six months. Some uh, acceptable alternatives are post-implant uh, NOAC instead of warfarin, or no warfarin or no NOAC in very high bleed, uh, bleed uh, risk patients with or without clopidogrel. Uh, there's quite a bit of data for uh, aspirin uh, monotherapy with acceptable outcomes. Um, just very briefly to review the PROTECT AF trial, this was the initial uh, proof of concept trial uh, enrolling patients from February 2005 to June 2008 published in the Lancet in 2009. There was no chance requirement, and that was a significant problem with this trial. There were two to one randomization of 707 patients to determine device non-inferiority or efficacy. And then, as you can see, the control group was maintained on warfarin therapy uh, for 45 days, and if there was a leak, they were treated six months. So they do check, they did check the patients for leak at three months to make sure that they could stop uh, uh, warfarin. Um, implant success was 91% and the mean follow-up was 18 uh, months. Um, the major problem of this trial, it was that there was serious pericardial effusion and major bleeding in a large proportion of patients. Um, in the long run, the control group suffered from hemorrhagic strokes, so the balance of an upfront risk of uh, pericardial effusion and tamponade versus the long-term risk of hemorrhagic stroke was present. Um, the device uh, showed um, uh, composite efficacy was slightly lower than uh, warfarin therapy, uh, but safety overall uh, was worse with the watchman because specifically of the um, pericardial effusions. Um, so the question then arose, could we overcome the safety issues by ensuring uh, with more experienced operators? And this led to the PROTECT AF Continued Access Protocol Registry or the CAP Registry. And you can see here that in the beginning, for uh, if you uh, simply looked at uh, pay, uh, uh, the very early experience. Um, we were able to overcome that later with more experienced operators. We did not have as much uh, uh, bleeding. Most of the events accrued uh, up front. And here is the uh, data reported from um, the CAP and PROTECT uh, registry combined. Um, overall, you can see that uh, the procedure time fell uh, and um, the serious pericardial effusion rate fell as well. Um, the PREVAIL trial was then designed uh, because uh, the, uh, the FDA did not approve the device based on PROTECT data. And this used a higher risk group of patients to neutralize the learning curve and of the early experience of PROTECT AF. This was randomized two to one and was multi-center. And they looked at patients with CHAS2 uh, uh, scores of greater than two. Um, and here, the protocol for anticoagulation was different. There was watchman occlusion of 45 days of warfarin or six months in non-seal at three months versus chronic warfarin. They had 407 patients. Um, here is the, uh, uh, the event-free uh, um, so, uh, Kaplan-Meier curves. Only six early events occurred in the device group, 2.2%. 
One these were, once these were accounted for, comparing events at greater than seven days post-implantation, the rate of stroke was greater than seven days after randomization for uh, the device, um, and 0 0.020, so you know, less than 2% for the control group. So both very low rates of stroke. Uh, Non-inferiority of late outcomes was, uh, was achieved. Um, this then led on to the ASAP study, which is a multi-center prospective non-randomized study because they were curious to know what happened when you got rid of warfarin altogether. And here you had 150 patients who were not candidates for warfarin. Um, the mean follow-up was 14.4 months, and it was very acceptable ischemic stroke rate. These are patients who are only on aspirin with a high CHATS2 vascular of 4.4 of 1.7% per, per year with a very low hemorrhagic uh, uh, stroke rate. And the rate was less than expected of the equivalent CHATS2 scores of 2.8, uh, so you could, there was a 6% drop. So at this point, the next step is ASAP2, which is now going to be a randomized control trial addressing this exact question. Um, it has just been, uh, the trial design has been just been published in the American Heart Journal in 2017, and enrollment will, cons uh, uh, will commence soon with a goal of 888 patients from 100 global sites. I'm sure China will be included uh, for 60-month follow-up. The post-FDA approval U.S. experience thus far, uh, from, for a year, from 2015 to 2016, there were 3,822 patients uh, in 169 centers. There was 96% successful implantation, uh, low rates of pericardial tamponade, uh, low rates of device embolization. So overall, uh, building on all the lessons we learned from the first two trials, we have successfully began a, a, a rollout in the United States. And at this point, uh, there have been an excess of uh, five, six, seven thousand patients enrolled. Um, so, to summarize, left atrial occlusion with watchman device implanted with the appropriate training is safe, even for new beginners who are adequately proctored. Number two, the best data is for patients who can take short term warfarin. Number three, there is reasonable registry data for patients who cannot take uh, long term uh, or even short term anticoagulation. And a randomized trial, ASAP2, is currently pending. The cost is significant given the burden of atrial fibrillation and uh, cost efficacy will ultimately decide a widespread long-term use. Thank you very much.